This week, we'll look at ways to read in more complicated CSV files, such as the CSV file containing the HERDAT2 dataset of all Atlantic hurricanes. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, my name is John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, we're going to start looking at the HERDAT2 best track data, which is available from the National Hurricane Center website at nhc.noaa.gov. This is the best track for hurricanes all the way back into the 1800s up until now, or in this case, up until 2019 is the last time the file was updated. So as you can see here, 1851 to 2019. You can just right click and save this link as to download the text file. But let's go ahead and take a look at that text file and look at if you click this known as Atlantic Herdat 2 PDF that describes the format. So taking a look at this file without reading anything in the format specification, I can see that it's going to be a little strange. So we've got what I'm going to guess is an Atlantic storm number and then unnamed, so I'm going to assume that normally that's a name, like a storm name, and then some integer that I'm not sure what it is yet. And then we've got all these lines. These look like dates, and we saw that we should go back to 1851. So that looks like a date, and these look like times. I don't know what this column is. I would assume this is hurricane and tropical storm, so maybe like a storm class. And then we've got a latitude and a longitude, and then a bunch of missing data out here. And then we've got down here another row. So now this gives me a clue that I see one there and there's only one row. Here I see 14 and there's what looks like maybe 14 rows. If you count them, it actually is. So my guess would be that this is telling me how many rows of location data follow this header and that each storm is going to have a header. So we can't just use pandas to read this because it's not really tabular data. It's a bunch of tables all concatenated together into one long text file. As always, it's good to go read the documentation. And if you start looking in this PDF, you'll find some things about what the format of the header and the format of the actual location data are. And it's also fixed width. You'll notice all the spaces around the commas because it is fixed width and comma separated. But we're not going to worry about parsing all of this out. What I'm most interested in is getting the storm number, the name, and the location and storm class at all of the date times. Because our ultimate goal here is going to be to make a plot of every historical storm track. And so we can look at them and maybe even get some individual data out of each of those paths. And we can do that with several different libraries out there like matplotlib or Bokeh. So let's open up a notebook and see if we can figure out how to read this. I know that in the end, I'm going to want a pandas data frame. So I'm going to go ahead and import pandas as PD. And we're going to deal with date times. So from date time, I'm going to import date time. And we know that if you look at the latitude and longitudes here, they're north and west. We need to turn those into floating point values. It's going to be very similar to what we did in the last video with a lat lon conversion, but a little bit different because we don't have to do the divide by 10 or anything here. So let's go ahead and write that function. Lat lon to float. And it's going to take some value. Don't forget a doc string. Convert strings from NHC to float locations. And we're going to say if the last character is an S, or if that last character is a W, then our multiplier is going to be equal to minus one. Otherwise, our multiplier is going to be equal to one. Finally, we want to return a float of that string, everything except the last character, the W or the S, 
times the multiplier. So if it's an S or a W, we'll put a negative sign in front. If it's an N or an E, we will not. All right, now we're ready to start reading that text file. And there are several ways that you could do this. The way I'm going to do it is I think a very readable way, which for me is important because ultimately you have to debug your own code or somebody else in the future might be trying to use it and debugging it. So it's really important to have something that's readable and understandable. While elegance and conciseness are nice, readability in my mind takes the, the front line here. Also somewhat speed, but this is only a six meg file. And as you'll see, it parses very, very quickly, even with a relatively simplistic parsing scheme here. So I'm gonna create an empty list to hold my data. Okay, and so I'm gonna use a context manager, which remember, uh, just helps me not have to remember to close a file when I'm done with it. And we're going to use the herdat2.txt file that we downloaded from NHC. We're going to open it in read mode and we're going to open it with the file handle F. Now I'm going to loop over all of the lines. So for line in F.read lines. And again, this does read a lot of things into RAM, but we're only dealing with megabytes of data here, not many gigabytes, so it's fine. For each of those lines, we can say if the line starts with AL, we know it's one of those header lines. If we go back and look at the file, these are all Atlantic storms. So if they start with AL, it's going to be a header line. And if it doesn't, it's going to be a location line. And there's always going to be a header line preceding the locations relevant to that storm. So I'm going to say if line starts with AL, then we know it's a header. The storm identifying information is going to be that line split up by commas. The storm number is going to be the first item out of that storm ID. And I'm going to call dot strip to get rid of any of those white spaces that are there because it's also a fixed width file. The storm name is going to be the second thing in that split line. And that's it. So now we have set these variables, storm name and storm number, that we can use for the rest of the lines to follow it. So I'm going to use an else. So if the line doesn't start with that, it's not a new header line. We're still working on the storm that what goes with the previous header, we need to split this line up. So I'm going to call it the location line and it's going to be line dot split on commas. First thing is going to be a date time. I'm going to call it DT. It's date time dot string parse time, which we've talked about before. Location line zero. And if you remember, it's actually zero and one because we have a date and then a comma and then a time. So it's zero plus location line one. Then we specify the format. So it's year, month, day. There's going to be a space because we're separating on commas and there is a space here and then hour, minute. All right, so now we can go to the next thing, which is the storm status. That's going to be location line, and then it's going to be the third index, the fourth thing. We're skipping one, and we're gonna strip any white space from that. The storm lat, we're going to call our lat lawn to float function and it's going to be the location line using tab complete to help us here. The fourth index, and we'll strip away any white space. Similarly, the storm lawn is going to be the fifth thing, or the fifth index. And we strip any white space from that. Finally, after we've parsed all of these things out, we're ready to append them into our data list. So I'm going to call data.append. 
I'm going to add a list into a list. So we have a list of lists. I'm going to use the storm number, the storm name, the storm status, the storm lat, the storm lawn, and finally the date time DT. So let's go ahead and run this and see if it works. It ran, as you can see, very, very quickly. And if we look at the zeroth element of data, it's indeed a list. And there we see a storm number, name, status, lat, lawn, and a date time. And those all look right. If we go back and look at this file, they do indeed match the values in this first row. So we know that our script is working as expected. So finally, we're ready to make this a data frame. And that's actually very, very easy. We're going to make a data frame, pd.dataframe. We're going to pass our data. And then we're going to tell it what the column names are. So storm number, storm name, storm status, lat, lawn, and finally, time. And since I made those things date time objects, you can do slicing and dicing on all kinds of things with time. So if we go ahead and run that and look at the head of our data frame, that looks exactly like what we expected. So very good, it appears to be working. We can do a few things like saying, well, how many unique storms are there? There's gonna be many, many rows. In fact, if we look at the, the tail, we see we've got uh, almost 52,000 rows of data here. But how many unique storms are there? So I could say something like, well, tell me the length of storm number dot unique. So we're looking at 1,893 unique storms. What about how many lines have different status? So we could say something like df dot group by, we could group by storm status, and then we could count. So there we see the different storm status and how many rows are at that storm status. So it looks like by far the most popular is a tropical storm followed by a hurricane. And then there's some of these other classifications that are outlined in this PDF here of disturbances, tropical waves, and so on. So now we've got this data in a relatively easy to use and manipulate format. So we can make histograms of latitude, longitude, storm statuses, how many storms in a given year or a given decade. You could do all kinds of data analysis with this as well as plotting, which is what we'll look at next week. So until then, I hope that you found this useful and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.